Hey guys, we have the most special guest today. If you click this thumbnail, you already know I am doing the Motion Behaviors Challenge with none other than Mark, Mark Spencer. Spencer. Hey Jen, it's really, really great to see you again. Uh, we've gotten to do a couple things together and it's been a lot of fun to, to do stuff with you. Yes, I'm so excited and I'm really happy that you've um, accepted the Apple Motion Behaviors Challenge, which I do want to tell people it's not a challenge between me and Mark. It is more of a challenge of like ourselves and our creativity and our skill sets. And it's just kind of a fun, creative exercise. Now, I know everyone knows Mark Spencer. I think if you're watching my channel, I have to believe you know Mark. But if you don't, Mark is from Ripple Training. I will link to his YouTube channel down below. But Mark, is there anything else you want um, everyone to know about you? Uh, <clears throat> no, I think that's great. I'm just excited to play the game. All right, let's do it. So here are the rules. If you don't know what the motion behaviors challenge is, I'm going to draw two random motion behaviors, and I'm also going to draw one type of motion project that Mark and I are gonna work on. Those projects could include a logo animation, a text animation, video overlay, looping background, or wild card, which is kind of the scariest one, I think. And then he and I are each going to have two hours to create something. And then we're going to meet back here and show you what we made. And then if you want to stick around, I'll give you more of an in-depth tutorial of how I made my project so you can get a better understanding of how the behaviors work. Are you ready, Mark? Let's do it. All right, here we go. Sequence replicator. Oh, I love replicators. This is going to be great. Yeah, I used the sequence replicator when I did the collab with you on your channel. So let's pick another. Ooh, right on. That's cool. Oh. All right. Very good. For those of you who don't know, the sequence replicator is a behavior that you can only add to replicators and it animates parameters sequentially through replicated objects. Now, the write on behavior draws or erases the outline of a shape over time. Now, let's Very pick good. the type of project we're going to work on. And it is logo animation. Oi. So logo animation with a write on and sequence text behavior and a sequence, sequence replicator. replicator. Behavior. This seems hard, okay. but I feel like we're up to the challenge. This seems hard. Okay. All right. All right. Sure. So we've got our assignment. The clock is going to start in just a second. Mark, you and I are going to meet back here and we're going to show each other the results. You ready? Sounds great. I will see you in two hours. See you in two hours. Two hours later. Welcome back. It has been two pressure packed hours for me and Mark. Mark, how did you feel like that went for you? Oh, it was great. I just, I, you know, I kind of make a mess and then I try to back my way out of it. I just throw everything in there and then figure out, okay, I got to simplify. So that's most of my time is like cleaning stuff up. Yeah, I feel like the hardest part is just deciding, first of all, what logo I was going to use and uh, like then, you know, my idea that's always the hardest part and then the execution it's like okay i've got the tools maybe a little bit of tweaking here and there maybe i couldn't make it look exactly the way i thought i would so i pivoted a little bit um but yeah i'm excited to show you are you ready to show me your animation yeah absolutely which which are we doing first here let's do yours, let's do yours first okay. I, I use the ripple logo uh because why not and ripple is based on water so i kind of want to do a water theme so I just have a little uh, gradient background with some uh, the underwater filter on it there. And then I used uh, the, I created a replicator of a circle and then uh, used the scale and scale end to make the you know, multiple copies of it larger and larger and use that as a bump map against the water to kind of look like ripples on the water. Um, so that was the main sequence replicator behavior was used to make those waves. And then the write on behavior uh, is the, you'll see how the R writes on there to, uh, you know, to make the R and the waves write on. So that's all the write on behavior because all of that's a, a shape. And just a little bit of background, that, that Ripple logo is actually an Illustrator file, uh, but I converted it to an SVG um, using the free Vectornator program. And then I, I brought it into Pixelmator Pro because Pixelmator Pro will now take your SVG files and, and export a motion project with them as shapes. 
So basically I was able to convert the Ripple logo into shapes and then use the shape behaviors like the write-on behavior in motion to write it on. Uh, and then the other little pieces after the ripples kind of go down, you see a little, you know, sparkle come off of it and that's another uh, replicator. And then I have it switch into a um, kind of a 3D object, which is really a, a font. And I've done an earlier tutorial where you can take a logo and, and create a font out of it. Um, and then you can make, it's basically 3D text at that point. And it just cross fades into that and cross fades back into the original logo. Okay, you did so much more with your two hours than I did. <laughs> I am like blown away by this. I think we should just stop the video. No, because you definitely not. outdone me. I did, I did something so much more simple, but I'm in love with you did and with what you did. And I'm definitely gonna have to check out that uh, logo to font video because I haven't seen that and I will find it and drop it for everybody. I, yeah, I'll send, I'll send it to you because... so you can put a link about that because I, I just I already had that. So it was easy because I had done that a, a long time ago. So it's like, I'll just throw that in there as a little extra thing. Um, I think, oh, so can I see, can I see yours now? Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is going to oh, be a huge stop. disappointment to everybody. Um, so I'm just going to first tell you that I used the NBC logo because I was thinking about what logo do I know that has like multiple images of something in it that I could make use the replicator with. Yeah. So let me show you what it is. Obviously, the write on is the white outline. I cut out in uh, Pixelmator Pro the white outline, and then I just cut out the green feather, and that's what I brought into motion. Then I replicated the feather. I made the shape into a line, and I made the points all start and end at the same spot and made six points with it. And then with the sequence replicator, I used the rotation parameter to make them all yes. rotate into place. And then I just put like the little overshoot uh, behavior on the bird to start the animation. And I always make logo animations happen really quick because I make marketing videos. And so usually I have like, let's say I'm working on a 30 second commercial and I have like two seconds to animate a logo. So I do everything super brief. Um, but that's what I did with my with my. Well, logo. it's funny because we both, I love the overshoot too. I use that to bring the logo on the screen. I, I use, you use the angle to overshoot. I overshot scale when because the ripple logo kind of pops on a little bit there. I love that overshoot. Right. And then explain, how did you do the, um, the colors fanning out and then, and then cross fading into the final solid fills? Like how? Did... That's a great question. So I did the color mode over pattern. And in the gradient there, I picked the squares to make them match um, the placement and everything of each of the peacock feathers. And then in the end, to make it all line up perfectly, I took the original logo and just faded it in at the very yeah. end, just to just to make it look perfect at the See, end. See, that, that's it's great. It it's simple, but it's so clean and it's it's so nice. I, that's you know, you're a designer, and that's where you really got that. You get the timing of everything down and how everything comes together. It's just great. Well, thank you. I can tell you, I used to work for NBC a hundred years ago, and this is completely against their brand of course. standards. But yeah. that's okay. I don't work for them anymore, so I can do it. <laughs> So Mark, I just really want to thank you for collaborating with me on this exercise. I know my audience is going to love seeing you on my channel and I loved having you here with me today. If you guys want to stick around and get a more in-depth tutorial about how I created my logo animation, um, you can stick around for that. I'm going to take you through it step by step like I always do. And I will link below to this version of the logo that I grabbed online so you can follow along if you so choose. Mark, again, thank you so much. I had so much fun doing this. Jen, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. Let's do it again. Yes. Yeah, let's definitely do this again. All right. Thanks, Mark. Bye. So the first step in this tutorial is to cut out elements from that logo. And today I'm going to be working in Pixelmator Pro to cut out that logo. But you can do this in any simple graphic design platform like Photoshop, Photoshop Elements, Affinity, anything. So you don't have to have Pixelmator Pro to follow along with this tutorial. And you could even theoretically mask out the elements that we need right in Apple Motion, but I don't think that's the most efficient way to do it. So we're gonna do it here in Pixelmator. So I'm going to choose this project size 3840 by 2160. And I'm just gonna drag and drop that logo into the project. 
and make sure it's centered and toward the top of the screen because we're going to be moving things around below the logo here. So I wanna make sure there's lots of breathing room. And here we are, we are centered. And I'm going to turn off the image layer here on the left side of my screen by unchecking that box. And I'm first gonna rename this layer here to full logo. Then I'm going to use the color selection tool to grab the whites. And then I'm going to right click and select copy and paste as layer. And here in my layers window now, I've got just the white outline, super clean. I'm going to rename that layer. Then we're gonna head back over to the full logo, make sure we're selected on that and use the color selection tool again to grab that green feather. I'm going to right click and copy and paste as layer. And now we've got the green feather isolated and I'm going to rename that as well. And that's it, that's all we need to do with this logo for this animation. So now I'm gonna hit file and go down to export. You could also do command E for this. And we're going to save this as a motion project, which is something really unique to Pixelmator Pro, which is why so many people who use Apple products really like it. Now we're gonna open up that motion project. If we head over to the project properties, you can see that it has the same dimensions that we created the project with in Pixelmator. And now I'm going to take this group and I'm going to bring it down so it's more centered in my frame. The first thing I'm going to do is duplicate this white outline. So to do that, I'm just going to turn everything else off so I can focus on what I'm working on. I'm going to right click and hit duplicate. Then I'm gonna turn off this top copy and work just here with the bottom copy. And what I'm going to do is use the Bezier mask to cut out the bird part of this logo. I'm gonna start by doing a pretty rough cut and then I'm gonna go in and make some of these points smooth. Guys, while I'm cutting out this bird, I do wanna let you know that if you're new to motion and you're looking for a really in-depth course to give you a better understanding of how the software works, I do have a course called Motion Launchpad you can find at jenjager.com. So definitely check that out if you feel like you like motion but you don't fully have a really in-depth grasp of how it works and you're not using it to its full potential. That course is designed for people just like you. So now that I've cut out my bird, I'm going to disable that layer in my project pane and enable the other outline that we created. And I'm going to use the Bezier tool to draw around these feathers. You can find the Bezier tool down beneath the canvas and we're just gonna click away. and just close that up by clicking the first point we created. Now you can see I've created this bright yellow outline. I'm gonna fine tune these points here by right clicking and making some of them smooth. And you'll notice that I went all the way down back to the base of the bird's body around every feather. That's gonna be really important down the road. The goal is to completely cover the outline of those feathers with this bezier shape. All right, and the next step is to head on over to our project pane and reduce the width of this outline. The goal is to have the line be as skinny as possible, but still cover that white outline. So let's see, a width of 48 is looking right to me and I just need to do a little bit of fine tuning here with my points to make sure all of those lines are covered. You wanna be really picky on this definitely looks like we've got it here. Now it's time to bring in the first behavior we're going to use, which is the write on behavior. So I'm going to select this Bezier here in my project pane. Let's head on up to behaviors, shape and write on. And now you can see down here in my timeline, we have this purple bar representing our write on behavior. Now you can see that the write-on behavior is happening really slowly. That is because the write-on behavior is the entire duration of our project. You can see this purple bar here extends the entire length of our project. I'm gonna shorten it up to let's say one second and 20 frames. Looks good, let me play that back. All right, the speed on that is really good, but it is going in the wrong direction. Let's fix that really quick. I'm going to select that Bezier in my project pane, head on over to behaviors, to find that right on behavior and let's change the direction from forward to reverse. 
Okay, perfect. Now we're going to use that bezier as an image mask to make that white outline look like it's writing on, not this yellow line. So to do that, we're going to select the white outline of the feathers here in our project pane, head on up to object, add image mask, and then you're going to get this well here for the mask source over here in your inspector window. Let's grab that bezier and drag it into that well. And now it looks like our feather outline is writing on. Now it does look a little bit messy here in the center, doesn't it? But that's okay. Let's turn on the bird that we cut out and make sure that this looks tidy now. Yeah, much better. Okay, now it's time to add some color to our logo. Let's focus our attention on that green feather that we cut out. I'm going to enable it in my project pane, there it is. And the first thing I'm going to do is change the color of this feather to white because we're going to be applying some color effects to this feather and the colors will be off if we start with a green base. So to make them right, we need to make this feather white. So I'm going to select it in my project pane, head on over to filters, let's go to color, let's go to colorize, head over to the project pane on the remap blacks, we're going to remap them to white. And on the remap white, we're going to remap that to pure white as well. So we can focus on that feather. I'm going to turn off the other elements in our project. And the next thing we need to do is change the anchor point of this feather. The anchor point is the point at which any changes you make, let's say in rotation, um, is going to originate from in the object that you're working on. So let me select the green feather here in my project pane. Let's head down to our tools menu and select anchor point. And you can see this blue dot represents where the anchor point is. It's like in the middle of the feather. This is not what I want. I actually want it to be at the very tip of this feather. Let me zoom into my canvas here and we are going to change the position of that anchor point using these arrows. So that blue dot is right at the tip of that feather. Now what we're going to do is replicate that feather. Remember, you cannot use the sequence replicator behavior unless you have a replicator in your project. So this is the element we are going to replicate. So to do that, I'm going to be selected on that feather in my project pane. Let's head over to the replicator button at the very top right of the screen. And you can see many versions of our feather have appeared. Let's head over to the project pane and make some changes here. The first thing we're going to do is look at the shape line. We're going to change it from rectangle to line. Then we are going to change the start point from negative 100 to zero. We're going to change the end point to zero. So now they're all starting at the same point here. And then under points, it defaults to five. We're actually going to make it six because our peacock logo has six feathers. The next thing we're going to look at is this line here, angle N. So right now they're all at the same angle. They're stacked on top of each other. We can't tell the first one from the last one. So we're going to focus on angle end here. And what I'm going to do is fan out these feathers so it looks like that. Now, I'm not 100% sure if I've got the proper angle here. It doesn't look to me that we're getting a straight line across the bottom of these feathers. So what I'm going to do is use my rulers here. Um, I've got rulers enabled here in my canvas. You can see all these little numbers here in the top and left side of my canvas. If you're not seeing this, head on up to view. Make sure rulers is enabled. And we're also going to need to enable what's called guides. And then I can drag from the top of my canvas. See, I get this double ended arrow. I'm going to drag a yellow line so I can check my alignment here on my feathers. I'm going to zoom way in and you can see that I've got my guide here aligned with that first green feather, but this last feather isn't quite at the right angle. So I'm going to just play with this angle value here. And yeah, 145 did it. So now I'm going to turn off that guide to get rid of it. Let's select the replicator here in our project pane. And now let's head over to color mode. We're going to drop down to color over pattern. Now you can see we've got an array of colors so we can tell the difference between all of our feathers. I actually need to make all of these individual colors the same colors as what's in the very famous Peacock logo. So I'm going to reach down for a color reference to our full logo and I'm going to duplicate that. And I'm going to enable that duplicate and I'm just going to move it over here just for reference. 
we're not going to need this for long, but you definitely want to duplicate it because you need to keep that original version of the logo in its exact place. So let's head back over to the replicator and let's drop down this arrow that says color gradient. And we're going to add along this gradient, all these different colors here in our peacock. Now I can see that the lighter blue, this first box is actually on the left in my gradient, but on the right here in my logo. So keep that in mind. So I'm going to select that box, use the eyedropper to pick the green. Then I'm going to actually create another box just by clicking in this gradient window, use the color picker again to pick the blue and so on and so forth. Then I'm going to take that reference logo that we made and I'm just going to line it up back here to make sure that my colors are spot on to me. Everything looks pretty close, but we can make it perfect. I'm going to play with the placement of these boxes in my gradient to the point where I can get them to all match perfectly. There we go, that did it, that's perfect. Okay, I'm going to take that duplicate of that logo we were using for reference and I'm going to delete it because it's just gonna mess us up, we don't need it. And now let's add that sequence replicator behavior. Let's head up to behaviors. You're gonna look for replicator and then use sequence replicator. It's the only choice you have in there. Here in the inspector window under behaviors, we can now see our sequence replicator. We need to add a parameter to this behavior to get it to work. So what we're going to do is add rotation. This is the only one we're going to need to use. And I'm going to change the rotation to 180 degrees. So here's what we've done so far. Each of our feathers one by one is rotating at 180 degrees and it's going really slowly. We're going to fix that. Don't you worry. Now let's look at the other values that we can change under this behavior. We're going to leave the sequencing on two and we're going to leave the unit size on object, but we're going to increase the spread to 100. And what that does is it keeps the feathers from moving one at a time. They're actually moving more in unison and we're going to change the traversal to ease out. Now let's make this whole thing happen faster. I'm gonna select the sequence replicator in my timeline, grab the end of it and reduce the duration to two seconds. And then I'm gonna select the replicator in the timeline here, and I'm gonna bring it to the 15 second mark so it doesn't start right away. All right, now the next thing I'm going to do is select that replicator in the project pane, head on over to properties, and let's head over to the rotation line and we're going to change the rotation of this to negative 180. So it's actually going to start from the bottom. Now I want these feathers to feel more like a gradient instead of individual feathers. So what I need to do is head back into the project pane to my original feather. Remember this feather? Now it's disabled because I replicated it. Once I replicate an object in my project pane, it becomes disabled and then this copy of it appears inside my replicator. You see that? So what we need to do though is modify this original feather because any changes we make to the item that we replicated to begin with will be reflected in the replicator. So what I'm going to do is select it, head on up to filters. We're gonna to go to Gaussian blur and let's crank this up to a value of let's say 200. All right, now let's turn on our outlines and see how we're doing here in terms of filling our feathers with this gradient. And you can see that my feathers aren't quite filling in that outline. Let's head back over to the green feather, the original one that we created in Pixelmator Pro and let's select properties and let's work on the X and Y scales of this independently. While I'm adjusting these X and Y values on these feathers, if you guys feel like you're learning something, let me know, give me that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. All right, so here we are. Now you're probably curious what I'm going to do about the excess of the gradient around our peacock. This is such an easy fix. We are going to add an image mask to our replicator to tighten up that gradient. So what we're going to do is select the replicator in our project pane, head on over to object, add image mask, and in the mask source well, we're gonna drag this original full logo here. Remember this logo? We're gonna drag it into that well, and there you go. It crops out the excess of our gradient. Very good. And then we're going to grab that full logo again, duplicate it, and bring it to the top of our project. Let's enable it. Bring it down to the very end of our sequence replicator. 
and we're gonna have this fade in to cover the gradient. So let's select it here in our timeline or in our project pane, head on over to behaviors, basic motion, fade in and fade out. And then here in the project pane, let's change in that fade out time to four. All right, so our feathers look great. The last thing we need to do is animate that bird, give it a little bit of life. So I'm going to select it here in my project pane. Let's first change the anchor point of this bird. We want it to be at the very base of its body. So let's go down and select the anchor point tool and just bring that green arrow straight down to the edge of our bird. And now let's add a behavior to this bird. We're gonna go up to behaviors, parameter, overshoot. I'm gonna make the overshoot behavior a duration of one second. And then in our inspector under behaviors on the apply to line, let's go properties, transform, rotation, and Z. Now let's play with the start value. I'm gonna make it, let's say 65. Let's make the ramp duration 16, and let's leave the cycles on three. Super cute. And the last thing we wanna do is add a fade in on that bird. So I'm going to make sure I'm selected on it. My project pane, go up to behaviors, basic motion, fade in and fade out. And let's give that fade in a value of three. And there you go. That is our final logo animation. Thank you so much to Mark Spencer for hanging out with me today. If you like this video, let me know. Give me that thumbs up. Drop in the comments who else you want to see me do this challenge with. Thanks for hanging out, you guys. I'll see you again.